Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shalev. I'm a second year medical student studying in Pavia. And today I'm with my friend Eli, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey guys, I'm Eli. I'm a fourth year student. I'm Bulgarian. There are very few Bulgarians coming to Italy, so... <laughs> yeah, she's also studying here in Pavia. Let's start off with... Um, about this to talk about the city of Pavia. So what do you think overall about the city? It's a really nice small city. Uh, there's not much to do there, here. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. not really there right now. Um, there's a, there are a lot of bars and mostly we do our own fun, I can say. Yeah. Uh, we have very good society of medical students. It's called Harvey Medsoc, you can check it out. And there is a lot going on in a small city, which is nice. We have a strong community, let's say. And Milan yeah. is close, so if you need any of that, it's like a 30 minute train ride. Yeah, when we first came here, we were like, oh yeah, we're gonna go to Milan every weekend. We're gonna go out partying there. We ended up going like twice in the first year. I mean, but if I tell you when like I've been it. to Milan last, it's been, I don't know, yeah, it's years actually. <laughs> Yeah, I have a friend in Milan and sometimes I go there to meet him, we kind of go around, but personally, I didn't. I don't really find much of a reason to go. I think there's plenty of bars and, you know, there's, there's this, I love this place and Eddie's gonna vouch for that. It's called Valhalla. It has like uh, a bunch of board games that's like super nerdy. Uh, they give you like a, a giant beer in a, in a horn and in I just horn. like, yeah, in a horn, like a giant horn. So there's all these like quirky, you know, uh, bars and shops and stuff. And I, I never really found like it's it's a bit of friction to go to Milan for 30 minutes. And I never really found that much of a reason. And there are there, so there the are parties. Huh? Besides the mm -hmm. cinema, maybe because we don't have one yeah. in English. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. We do have a cinema here, but it's not in English. It's in Italian. But there are a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there are parties by Harvey Medsoc, the society. And they there are events and things happening in Pavia that I feel like we should have uh, taken more advantage of. I don't know about you, but I did. I should have gone to more of them, the Erasmus parties and uh, what's that other one? Um, there's some, there's a group that makes parties and stuff in Pavia. Uh, I don't know, there's so many groups making parties, but exactly. you know, it would be interesting in your next uh, interviews uh, with other people around Italy, uh, whether they have such a society like Harvey Medsoc. Because yeah. I think we have something pretty unique here. Yeah, it's, it's really, really good because it's not just, you know, like they set up a prom, they'd make parties and things like that, but it's not just that. They help us improve the university and uh, I, I think it's a really good thing what we have there. Yeah, guys, we have a prom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a prom, but we also have merch and the merch. I like the merch. It's pretty nice. That's that's right. Oh, another thing about Pavia, <clears throat> there's the Ticino River running right through it. So even though we don't have a lot of parks and it's a small city, you like we can chill by <clears throat> by Pavia's coast. We do yeah. barbecues. <clears throat> yeah, we can. We really can also that. take a, a boat like downside the river. And we've done that, it's really cool. <laughs> so it yeah. offers a lot. And yeah, I really that's... like, one thing I really like about Pavia is when I first, I remember when I first came to the university, we were doing the preterm, there was physics and chemistry, so it wasn't very intense. And I remember after class, it was like one, I went to the city and I just saw like a group of my friends sitting at the cafe and I was like, oh, hey guys, how's it going? And then across, I saw a couple of girls from my class that I recognized, they were sitting at the cafe. And on the bus, I met this one guy from uh, from upper years who I recognize. And you just kind of see people around town and it, it's, it feels like a community that you, you can get to know people. And I, I really like that about it. Yeah, actually, I think it's impossible to go outside and not meet. Exactly, yeah. It's sometimes a bit scary because like I want to go to the supermarket and I look really gross and I'm like, oh, what if I see someone that I know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but We've I think all done it's it. really a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think about the accommodation situation in Pavia? In what? case people are wondering. Accommodation, so like living, living um, costs, how is it like finding an apartment? Living costs are significantly cheaper than Milan. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on your price range, you can find, well, I think the cheapest you could find is a room around 200 euros maybe. That's like the... 
Yeah, that's basically like a square with a bed and a desk. Yeah, uh, and outside of the center maybe, but that really doesn't matter much because Pavia is so small that it takes you like 10 minute walk from any, okay, 20 minute walk from the furthest point to the center. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, if you want an apartment in which you live by yourself, it's called Monolocale, you can, it can go up to 400 euros, 450, but if you share Mm -hmm. A uh, room with a friend or roommate. Um, usually the price is around 250 to 300 euros. And then, I mean, if you're really on the low range, you can deal. You can deal with 500, 550 euros per month overall, like with bills, food. Uh, For a but I think. Locale, right? hmm? For a mono locale, the single no, person. No, no, no. I mean, okay, you have the apartment, the the rent. You have bills. And then you have food, and then you have well, going out yeah. and stuff. Oh, you so, mean for living, five fifty. For living, I mean, there were times I I did manage for five hundred euros, like overall. I'm very proud proud that's, of myself. That's tough. Yeah. But then, if you if you, you could also spend more, like I think people usually spend around six 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 hundred fifty per month yeah. overall. And it depends on a lot of things. Um, it depends on the price of your accommodation. It depends on how much you spend on food. It depends on how much you go out. It depends on if you smoke. It depends on, there's a lot of things, but in general, like 600 to 700 is, is a good ballpark that I think most people end up going around. But there's also yeah. the choice of colegios, they call it, which is the student accommodation in Pavia. I'm not sure how it is in other universities. I'll think I'll ask them in future interviews, but I think so. basic. Huh? I think some have it, yeah. Yeah, um, I'll check on later when, when I do some more interviews, which specifically which universities have it. But basically, I heard it's kind of like in Oxford where you have different colleges and each one has their own accommodation. It's kind of like uh, dorms. And each one has, I think it's a, like one professor who's in charge and they have a bunch of activities and stuff where like, and um, they have tutorings and they have seminars there. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm not experienced in this. I've never been in one. Yeah, it's a, it's a dormitory. I think you would call it. Um, we also have something they call mensa in Italian. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a place where you can eat. You, you have to apply for it in, uh, in something in a. I don't know. It's a. What is it? Edisu. <laughs> Edisu is. It's like you apply for a scholarship slash financial aid thing. And yeah, that might be something. Uh, that might be something useful for people who apply, because you need to apply before actually entering. So if you are putting oh, money as yeah. your first choice, you might want to look it up because you yeah. you could get a scholarship and access to the to the uh, canteen. Yeah, Menzies canteen. Canteen. Yeah, it's like a cafeteria so slash canteen. You could eat for free, and actually, it's good food, and it's a lot of food. <laughs> and yeah, it's a lot of food. Yeah, in the middle of the day when you're in the university, at the university, and you just, I mean, you have morning lectures, afternoon lectures, and you don't want to go home. Really, it's it's really nice to have that. And it saves time because you don't have to cook. Cooking takes quite a long time. You can just end of lectures, go get some food, eat, and then you know go to the library or something. Especially some of us don't like cooking so much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I have a quick. <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> I'm I'm just pretty inconsistent with cooking. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Let's just leave it at that. But okay. But um, so I was gonna say there's so there's this scholarship that you can apply for that you need to apply for before you get in uh, for first year, which is a bit confusing. So I kind of missed out on this whole like all of first year for that stuff because uh, I didn't have any information on that beforehand. So I think I'll make a video on that in the future about how to apply for that beforehand and things. But basically, uh, if you get a scholarship, which before you start uh, in first year, then it's going to be based on your economic situation instead of your uh, uh, instead of your grades. But they give you like what is it like three thousand euros and free food once a day. Is it three? Five thousand is maximum. Five thousand maximum. Okay, it depends, right? Like it varies. Yeah, but you could also you could also instead. Uh, Instead of having a scholarship, uh, 
for which you might not classify if your income is high enough they might mm -hmm. give you a reduction of the university fee so some people i think the, yeah. that's also another point maybe you should uh, touch mm -hmm. that some i think the maximum is around three thousand euros per year per academic mm -hmm. year but mm -hmm. uh, some people don't pay anything because of uh, that reduction yeah I, I don't think many people actually pay because First of all, it depends on which country you're from. And I think they get that on, on your passport. And if your country is very uh, developed slash, you know, high GDP, then you pay the maximum, which is like 3,000. No, no, if you're... no, no, just, just the opposite. What? For example, Israel, Israel Israel's the uh, most, they pay a lot. Well, I'm from Bulgaria and I pay the most. <laughs> Bulgaria is a very poor country. So I have talked to the secretary actually because I was super surprised when when I found that I have to pay more than like I don't know American people. <laughs> American so, people are not the most? What? No, but there is an index of each country. Uh, you can actually check it in the deep in the documents of uh, Ediso like yeah you know? uh, it's written with small letters but <clears throat> there is an index in in which um, so the logic is the following. If a country is expensive, so with this amount of money that your parents earn, you can buy X number of things oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna be considered poor in your country that is a rich country. Well, if I have the same amount of money coming from a poor country, oh, I will what? be considered rich there. And the thing is, well, I'm not in that country. I'm in Italy. <laughs> it's a completely different story for me. So really? I don't see the logic, but. Because yeah. when I just looked at the countries, it just seemed like more developed was more expensive and less developed, usually like Asian countries and African countries, is like you pay almost e either nothing or like a thousand. No, I don't know what you looked, but... Isn't it? <laughs> but, well, that's my story. I don't know. Uh, I, I've asked the secretary. <laughs> all right. All right. So we'll just say first, depending on your country, you'll pay a certain amount. And then you can give them documents that tell them how, like your family income and how many siblings you have and what uh, assets see, you have, and then they further yeah. reduce it. The thing is, what we're speaking about two different things. Okay, so let's let's put it like that. Oh, okay. You can either um, not give the documents of your parents. This yeah, is that's like what their I was income, about. their pro uh, property, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of documents that, that need to be prepared before. So if you don't give these documents, you're classified according to your country and then maybe yeah. poorer countries uh, pay it. less, yeah. yeah. But if you give the, the income, then they calculate it with that index and then it's- Oh, the okay, so we're talking about two different things. I was saying that if you don't give them any documents, they're just gonna go based on your country. If it's a rich country, yeah. you're gonna pay more. If it's a less rich country, you're gonna pay yeah. less. And then if you do give them those documents, they'll reduce your fees based on um, the index that Ellie said, and based on like, if your parents make more money, if you have n no or fewer siblings, then you're gonna pay more. Yes. The right. more um, siblings you have, the more, the less you pay. Yeah, so that's basically like the, the situation for paying university fees. Um, mm -hmm. So what do you think about overall uh, living costs in Pavia, do you think that like compared to Milan, um, how much cheaper is it? Like what should people keep in mind when they're considering living costs, depending on where they go? Uh, well, I only ever lived in Milan, Milan for a month. So I can't really say exactly the difference, but I know that besides rent, bills, and from time to time going out, mm -hmm. you can't spend much because, because you don't have where. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I think between 500 and 700 euros, you, if you can fit there, it's it's pretty realistic. Yeah, I do think that if you're if you have a lot of money, I think it's easier to spend more money in Milan. I think if you don't have a lot of money, it's easier to spend less in Pavia. But I think in general, people i think spend about the same in milan and Pavia. I, don't, I don't have any experience in milan i'm gonna ask someone when i interview them but i think in yeah. general other than living costs which are more expensive i mean not living costs, other than accommodation and rent which is more expensive in milan 
I think in general, you're going to spend about the same. Yeah. Because you have where to spend it because in, um, yeah, I mean, the prices of everything are the same, really. It's the same region, Lombardia, so costs are the same apart from apartments. Hey guys, Editing Shalev here. Thanks for watching this first video in the interview series. I've decided to cut them into shorter parts. This first part has been about uh, living in Pavia, accommodation and living expenses. And the next one is going to be about the course itself, comparing the preclinical years to the clinical years. So make sure to like, subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss the next video. And yeah, thanks for watching.